Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on acid-base equilibria where we're going to talk about the auto-ionization of water, uh, conjugate acids and bases, and acid-base strength. Now the auto-ionization of water is exactly what it sounds like. Water will undergo ionization with itself. So in pure water, this happens. A water molecule will react with another water molecule and when they do, one acts as an acid, one acts as a base, and they essentially swap a proton, or a proton goes from one to the other, forming OH- and H3O- in solution. So in pure water, there's already OH- and H- in solution. But they're in equal concentrations, so one doesn't overpower the other, thus keeping water neutral in its pH. H plus isn't higher and OH minus isn't higher, so um, it's neutral. If I add, let's say, an acid, let's say I add an acid here. If I add an acid, I'm adding more H plus, thus increasing my concentration of H plus, making the overall solution acidic. If I didn't add H plus, but I added you know, OH minus, so if I added a base, I'd be adding more OH minus to solution, thus increasing this overall concentration, making that overall solution basic. So by itself, water is obviously neutral, pure water is, uh, because the concentrations of H plus and OH minus are equal. Once you add an acid or a base to water, then you increase either the hydroxide or hydronium concentration, creating an acidic or basic solution. Uh, water, as it can act as an acid or base, we call that amphoteric or amphiprotic. Now, when acids and bases react together, they form something called conjugate acids and conjugate bases. The term conjugate comes from the Latin meaning to join together. So when you're joining together acids and bases, you always get a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. For example, here I have nitrous acid. It's going to react with water as a base. And as a result, for my acid here, I remove an electron. You know, acids are, elect are proton. Sorry, I remove a proton here. Um, and protons are, are um, removed from the acids because acids are proton donors, and I get NO2 one minus. This is your conjugate base. So acids turn into conjugate bases on the other side of the um, reaction. The base here that we started with, H2O, is going to gain a proton and become your conjugate acid, H3O+. One way to look at it is to look from the other side. On the other side here, if we just think about you know having a clean start, this is my substance here, H3O+. This is a substance that has the H+, because NO2 doesn't have any H's, so it can't be acidic. This would look, this would be my acid, so that is my conjugate acid. This substance here, without any H pluses, must be then my base. So, gentlemen, please um, know how to identify conjugate acid and conjugate base. You can practice with this equation down here. So, label the acid, label the base. Label your conjugate acid and label your conjugate base um, in this reaction below. Now let's talk about acid and base strength. Uh, we talked about strong acids in chapter 4 and strong bases, and we're going to have to revisit that. Um, in your book, there's a chart that looks like the one here to the right that gives you increasing acid strength and increasing base strength. We can start by looking at this first statement. It says strong acids are completely dissociated in water. We should all know that. Thus, what this means is that their conjugate bases are quite weak, meaning they're negligible in basicity, meaning they're not really basic at all. 
So we can look here at this first little tier. Here are my strong acids. Their conjugate bases are right here. They are negligible, meaning they're not very basic at all, because as we go this way, we increase in basic strength. As we go up, we're increasing in acid strength, according to this diagram. Weak acids only dissociate partially in water, and they're here. Their conjugate bases are weak bases, here. So their conjugate bases of a, of a weak acid are stronger than the conjugate bases of strong acids. An example of those two are down here. Here's my first tier. So <clears throat> HCl is a strong acid. H2O here is going to act as my base. When these react together, we get H3O plus and Cl minus. H3O plus, it's coming from here, this is going to be my conjugate acid. And the HCl, so the Cl minus, is going to be my conjugate base. So I would look over here to see that. Cl minus is right there. It's a conjugate base. It's negligible. HCl is right here. So the conjugate base of my strong acid, HCl, is not very strong. The conjugate base is really weak. It's negligible. Meaning that this reaction would not want to go backwards. Because this base isn't very strong, isn't strong enough to react with this H3O plus again, creating, going backwards, to H2O and HCl. The forward reaction is going to dominate here because we are still talking about equilibrium. But I'll talk about that more next in the next uh, few slides. Next here, the bottom. We have <clears throat> acetic acid, CH3CO2H, reacting with water creating hydronium, and an acetate ion. Now this is a weak acid, and water here is acting as a base. H3O plus is my conjugate acid, and this acetate ion is my conjugate base. Acetate is right here on this chart, and acetic acid is right across from it. So, <clears throat> since my conjugate base here is a weak base, um, it would not uh, be favored to go left. But since this is a weak acid, it isn't necessarily very favored to go right. This one is kind of in between. So that's why weak bases and weak acids are very stable at times. That's why we use them as indicators. Substances with negligible acidity do not dissociate in water at all. Thus, they're usually non-issues. So things in this tier at the bottom. These have negligible acidity because they come from very strong bases. So if I have a very strong base, the conjugate acid of that, which is going to be over here, would be negligible. So if I have any of these bases then if they're the reactants, their products are going to be favored because they are going to uh, then dissociate and form their products. Now, how does this affect equilibrium? I kind of just touched on that a minute ago, but here it is um, <clears throat> a little more in, in plain day, I guess. So in, in any acid-base reaction, the equilibrium will favor the reaction that moves the proton to the stronger base. So the name of this game is follow the proton. Think about the proton, so the H from the acid. So here I have HCl. This is my acid. It's a strong acid. This is my base. It's going to conjugate acid in my conjugate base. Now, I have to look at my bases here. My bases are the base, H2O, and the conjugate base, Cl-, and look at which one is stronger. 
So I can look at that chart excuse me, that we have here. That chart, I have Cl minus here. It's my conjugate base. And I have H2O here. According to this chart, H2O is a stronger base because we increase in base strength as we go down this column. So since H2O is a stronger base, then that means the reaction that H2O is in is going to be favored. So that means the forward reaction is favored, since H2O is a stronger base than Cl minus. Think about them, you know, competing with one another. If Cl minus isn't as strong as H2O, then the reverse reaction can't dominate. The forward reaction will. Since that's the case, then your K value, your equilibrium constant, is going to be much greater than 1 since your products are favored. If you think about your equilibrium expression, what it's going to look like. Since <clears throat> equilibrium lies so far to the right with your products, K is going to be much greater than 1. And that's going to have some value for us later on, so please remember that. And lastly, if we do this with a weak acid, it would uh, be somewhat similar, but not as extreme. So here we have, again, our acid here. It's a weak one this time. Our base, forming our conjugate acid, and our conjugate base. If we look at our chart again, looking at our, our bases here, this base here is called acetate. This base is water. Let's find them. Well, acetate is here and water is here. Acetate is a stronger base than water, thus the reverse reaction will be favored a little bit more. Not terribly more in this case, but <clears throat> according to the chart it will be favored more. So the reverse reaction will be favored more than the forward reaction because our conjugate base is much stronger than our base in the forward reaction. Since acetate is stronger, we see that equilibrium will <clears throat> lie to the left side, so your K value, oh, excuse me, your K value is going to be less than 1 because the equilibrium lies to the left. Gentlemen, please take notes on this. Come prepared to talk about it in class. Adios.